I, and I looked at him. I said, you, you go over here. You go over here. So I look, I point at him. I said, you go to the back of the room. You go over here. You stay away from her. You go over here. He's like, oh, oh my bad. I'm sorry. I was in What's good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Prodigy. We're back with another episode of the podcast with Prodigy. As always, we got a special, special guest. Today, we got in the building Grammy-nominated, multi-platinum songwriter and producer, Jay Beats. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on your show, you know? Appreciate you. Of course. It's a blessing, man. Where are you coming from today? Where are you commuting from? Oh, really? I was just at the crib, um, you know? Yeah, I was at the crib. I was working during the day. I had, a, had some early meetings, and you know, I was just resting, just cooked some dinner, and then now I'm here. Yeah, you sure? yeah, just yeah. chilling, kick back type of day today. Today, yeah, for yeah, for a Friday, it's kind of laid back, you know. But tomorrow, we going up tomorrow night. Yes, yeah, sir. You got what's well, so what's the plans tomorrow? <laughs> oh man! Well, after I do the dad thing, you know, basketball practice and all that, I got two dates. So I got two ladies. I got one that wants to go to the movies. <laughs> I got one that wants to kick it. And then my artists out in Hollywood, they're always doing something crazy. Maybe some mansion party, some some exclusive, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like I'm just going to roll the dice and see where they land. <laughs> you going to fit it all in the schedule? All three of those things are scheduled tomorrow night? Yeah, I'll make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make it work. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So, um... If you guys don't know, Jay Beats has worked with some of the biggest names in the industry. He's very respected in the game, worked with a lot of artists and stuff like that. But let's get to know you, my boy, Jay Beats. Where did you grow up at? I mean, I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, and then I was raised in New London, Connecticut. And then I left there. I, I, yeah, I went to high school. I lived there throughout my, you know, my childhood. And then I left when I was like, I don't know, 19, 20. I moved to Orlando, Florida. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Went to full sail for audio engineering just because I was making beats as a kid. And I just, I don't know, I just wanted to learn the science behind it. Yeah. You know, you know, and yeah, then I moved to Orlando. And then from there, I moved to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. That's tight. That's tight. So growing up in Connecticut, what's like Connecticut known for? What's that one thing that everybody's, you know, going crazy for? Everybody's known for in Connecticut. Well, I mean, we got good sports programs out there, like uh, baseball, football, and basketball. You know, especially basketball is really, really big out there. Like my hometown, we bred a couple NBA players. You know, actually, one of the singers from En Vogue is from New London. It's kind of, you know, it's like it's, it's, it's like a small town. Uh, Don, I think. yeah, 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 yeah. Don from En Vogue is from New London. Cassie, uh, Puffy's ex girl, she's from New London. Yeah, and Jay Beats, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We come from that little town, but a lot goes down in that little town, you know. You know, we got uh, we got the sub base, we got uh, electric boat where my father worked. Uh, that that's where they manufacture submarines. Uh, Pfizer, the people who make Viagra, Pfizer's there, <laughs> and the uh, and the headquarters of Homeland Security. <laughs> it all is right there on that little on the Thames River, and the Coast Guard Academy is right there too. <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff. I remember as a kid growing up, uh, every weekend you would hear sirens. <laughs> this is just the test. It's like if, if like a nuclear bomb is gonna hit. Like I guess if, once you hear that siren, I guess it's too late. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of crazy growing up. I didn't really realize that until I got out. You know when I was around. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. excited about the Viagra company being so close. I mean, thank God. I mean, I'm good without it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, got to, you know, got to keep your libido up, stay in the gym, you know, stay active so you don't have to uh, take those things. Yep, you know? yep, yep. <laughs> but I remember one time, this is a true, true story. It was um, when I was living in Atlanta, I went back to Connecticut to visit and I was dri- I was driving out and I, and I told my dad, I said, hey, pull over. Look, it's the Pfizer. Look, I, I had the Pfizer sign. So I pulled over and I took a picture <laughs> and I posted it. Right. This was years ago. And then a couple months later, because I was in my dad's car, uh, my dad got a he got a, a letter in the mail asking him why was he taking photos in front of the Pfizer <laughs> sign, you know, because <laughs> they got they had a picture of his license plate. So after that, they took the Pfizer sign down. Now it says like it's, it says something else now. <laughs> yeah, because oh, of your one photo. Because of my one tourist photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Must have uh, felt important then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, had a hard on for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely had a hard on. I had to take that side. I was like, whoa, we're getting too popular. You know? so, yeah. <laughs> got to get out of here. You gotta get, <laughs> they, they well, they didn't get us. out. They just took the sign down. Yeah, <laughs> They put something else. Uh, I forgot what it says, but it's not Pfizer anymore. <laughs> That's funny. So tell me about um, your high school experience. Were you more uh, focused on school or were you like? An athlete, or are you more focused on the ladies? Well, you know, like, I played sports my whole life. You know, from the age of seven all the way to, like, 17, 18. I remember we uh, we formed a, a men's baseball league, you know, and um, we had a coach. I remember the whole team got tossed out of the game, but that was, like, after high school. But anyway, <laughs> but back to high school, actually, I finished ninth grade, and with a lot of things going on in my life, I, I was working and hustling. I ended up going to... Uh, Adult ed to finish. You know, I, I actually passed the high school equivalency test without studying anything and, and just passed with barely, with barely a ninth grade education. You know, I just did what I had to do. You know, I had a kid at a young age. You know, so I was just hustling, doing what I had to do. So I just realized at one point in my life at that, at that chapter, I got to do something with my life. You know, so I was physically in shape. I was bench pressing 400 pounds. I was, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, that was, that was my max, 405. Yep, I was able to do it two times at the age of 19. Jeez. So um, I was going to join the Army. You know, I was talking to someone in the Army, but when I, when I, after I took the ASVAB and all that, and, and um, uh, the recruiter, he comes up to me. He goes, uh, yeah, 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 we accept you. I can get you in. But um, the, the job, I said, well, what's my job? He's like, it's a, it's a more adventurous route. I was like, well, what's that? He was like, infantry. I was, oh, I was like, um... I'm going to get back to you on that, you know? Let, yeah. let me think about it, you know? So in the process of that, I found out they have schools for, like, audio engineering because I was just making yeah. beats, recording local rappers, you know? So I was like, I'm going to go that route. <laughs> I, I'm going to roll the dice and do something that everyone says you can't do or most people dream about doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, you know, do something big because I always dream big from a kid, like, my first dream, I want to be a doctor. Then I want to be a major league baseball player. Then I want to be a professional wrestler. And then I decided to become a music producer, and that's the one I actually pursued. Wait, you wanted to be a professional wrestler at one point? Yeah, 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 yeah. How long did that dream last for you? It lasts a couple of years because, um, you know, like I said, I was active. I was in the gym. You know, lift, I, was he I, was, I was heavy lifting at like 15, 16, really 16. And, um, and I used to do wrestling moves on all my friends. You know what I mean? I, I put them in the Stone Cold <laughs> Stunner. Uh, the sharpshooter, you know, I remember one time I put this kid in a figure four and I popped his bone out of his socket, out of his knee, you know. <laughs> when they told you don't do this at home, they, they, they're they serious, you know. <laughs> yeah, I put a hole through my wall. I did a spear. Remember Goldberg, the spear? I speared someone to my wall and put a hole <laughs> in my wall, yeah. It was crazy. It was backyard brawling. So, yeah, it, it was wild, yeah. Did you guys videotape that? Uh, it was before self. Well, hey, this is back in the sea. See, I'm an 80s baby, so this is back in probably like 90, late 90s. Like ninety nine, early two thousand. Yeah, yeah we'd have a cam. We'd have to have a camcorder. I wish we did. Uh, it was a, that was a camcorder days, and and uh, I remember I had web TV. That was when the chat rooms first began, and that was the first time I met a girl off the internet at the at the, <laughs> at the mall. And um, let's just say it didn't go that well. You catfish for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she, she was like super pale and uh, weird and ugly, and then she was. She, I saw her. In the food court in the mall, and I pretended I didn't see her, and she knew it was me because I told her what I had on, and uh, uh. I tried to avoid her. And then she came and spoke to me, and I and I didn't want to be mean, so I was like, "Hi," and and then she was just following me around the mall, and then and I kept dodging and ducking. She finally got the hand and, and backed off. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not for me. But but yeah, I was catfish, catfish. No, no, it was no, it was a woman. It was just, I guess I was really young at the time. I think I was like sixteen. I was like fifteen or sixteen. It was like when Web TV, Web TV first came out. I remember it was a wireless keyboard and a box. You hook it to your TV, and then it was a uh, dial-up, the old school internet. You know what I mean? The the regular telephone jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I was selling weed and playing video games. I had Nintendo 64. <laughs> I remember we was playing on the wrestling game, the uh, WCW versus MWO. I was like, it had GoldenEye 007. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was that era. Yeah, man. I'll tell you, I was selling weed and playing games that day. That's why I ain't finished regular school. I got caught up, but, you know, <laughs> I, it made sense. So, it, you know, I did something with my life, though. So it prepared me for my future. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take you to get to that first date, that first meetup with the girl at the mall? 
It didn't take long, actually. Um, no, because we were just chatting on the, my name. You know what my name was? You know what my chat name was? It was Joshua Josh 77. Because <laughs> my name is Julia. <laughs> so uh, it didn't take long. Like we, we were in the chat room. We were chat, chatting. It was on web TV. I think I gave her my phone number. I don't remember. She called me. But I remember on the phone, she was moaning on the phone. Like she's like, she's like, you want me to moan for you? I was, uh, I was like, sure. And she's like, oh, oh, oh. here I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I probably had sex twice my whole life by the time that happened. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, wow. You know, it was, it was, it was, wow. it, was yeah, it was different. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, earlier you mentioned that you, you know you were just playing video games and like some weed and stuff but yeah. so and you didn't uh initially graduate you, uh from ninth grade and stuff like that so no. were you getting in was it because you were getting into a lot of trouble when you were younger yeah i was getting caught up and then i had a lot of like you know personal issues at home and you know what i'm saying you know and i was living with my father and he was always you know working and partying when he wasn't working he was partying when he wasn't working partying he was sleeping you know what I'm saying? My dad worked hard, play hard. He's a good man. You know what I'm saying? So I really had no one to really force me to go. And I kind of lost interest. I didn't want to go. And then just through, like, me living my life. Like, everyone came to my house and party. I had the party house. Yeah. And so when everyone skipped school, they came to my place. You know what I mean? Girls, homeboys, you know what I mean? And smoke weed and play video games. I mean, at that age, it wasn't really thinking about the future. He was living living a life, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. So, what was like your first introduction into like making music or like even just thinking about wanting to make music? Well, like I played the drums like throughout uh, my whole like grade school, middle school, and then one year in high school. Um, I played. I was in the uh, the band. You know, uh, the, uh, yeah, the band. I played the drums. Learned how to read music. Had rhythm. I always had just always had rhythm and notes in my head. You know, uh, my grandfather was an opera singer. And my uncle was a professional drummer. He lived in California at the time. But one time he came to visit. This is my mom's brother. He bought me my first pair of drumsticks like when I was really young, before I even started playing the drums. But anyway, I was playing the drums, always had rhythm in my head. And then one day I'm driving my car, you know, um, I was, it was my first car. I was like 17 years old. I had 310 subwoofers. I had JL Audio, W0s, 310s. I had the, uh, the nice amp. I had the Alpine amp, the Alpine deck. And I was Banging, you know, <laughs> booming the block down at a young age, you know, and um, just just hearing a lot of bass and a lot of beats, you know, I just always loved bass and beats, and then you know, and a lot of inspiration, you know, like Neptune's, Timberland, you know, Lil John, these like producers, like I was just listening to a lot of their music at the time, and one day I was just driving down the street and I just hearing the bass and the bass hitting so hard, and I'm just like, I, want, I just want to make beats. I was like, I just, how do you do this? Like, how do you do that? And at the time, computers weren't as accessible. You know what I mean? I just, I, did, I just, I don't know. So I did my research. I remember I went to the library. I didn't even have internet at my house. I didn't have a computer at the time. I went to the library and did research. Beat machines. How do you make beats? And this and this and that. You know. And I was looking up beat, different beat machines and what you need to get. And this. I did all my own research. Printed it on paper. And then one day I was at Toys R Us. Shout out to Toys R Us. You know. <laughs> Well, rest in peace to Toys R Us, I should say. <laughs> but they had a game. It was for PlayStation, right? It was called Magic's Music Maker for $19.99. <laughs> I was like, this looks interesting. So I bought the game. And I went home and I played it. It was like it was like you're making beats on a PlayStation, you know, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. You like you slide the loops at the mixer. I was like, oh, this is what Dr. Dre be doing. I, was like, I felt like I was. Doing, oh, this is what he be doing. He just he be mixing the sounds and all. You know, I, you know, it just it felt great. And on top of that, I was doing the research, and I was like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and do this for real. So when I got my income tax check that year, I spent my whole entire income tax check on, on a beat machine. I bought a Roland MC909, uh, 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 a M, um, M Audio MIDI keyboard, the M Audio speakers. And it was a groove box. It was a Rowan MC 909 groove box. And I just started banging away and, and taught myself how to do it. That's still the shit. It's yeah. still the shit. I know. That's tight. Yeah. And then through the process of that, I was making a beat. So I was like, okay, I got to record songs now. So I had a friend of mine who had a laptop. I was like, let me borrow your laptop. He's okay. So he, he let me borrow his laptop, and I never gave it back. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he still talks about it to this day. He's like, bro, you stole me a laptop. You know, I, 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 man, that was my laptop. Now I put, I installed Sonar Two, so I had Sonar Two, and I was uploading my two track beats in the Sonar Two, and I was recording people with a Radio Shack mic, 
plugged directly to my computer, and I thought I was doing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I man, start somewhere is better than having no mic, no laptop. Facts. <laughs> I mean, I made it, I had to do what I had to do, man, you know, so. Yeah, and so, uh, obviously, blasting that music down, uh, you know, obviously talking about names like Lil John, all these producers, obviously, you know, heavy bass, you know, hip hop classics and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it inspired you to do all that type of hip hop music, but do you focus only on hip hop music or is it uh, more genres that you cover when you produce? Well, I, I, I have an open state of mind to anything, but hip hop has been what changed my life, you know what I mean? Um, but I love rock music. I love rock. I love heavy metal, like double bass, you know, like all that crazy, rah, all that. I like, yeah. I like that shit. Um, Hip hop, I like, I like R and B. Um, I like pops. I like pop. I like good music. You know, so I like timeless music. I like hits. You know, like all, I love hit songs like Led Zeppelin, Prince, timeless music. You know what I mean? The Beatles. I like music that you could play 40, 50 years down the road and it still sounds fresh. So really, that that's where I'm at. At this age and chapter of my career, in my life, I'm on timeless. I'm on timeless vibes. Timeless vibes. Whatever the giant genre is, you know, just hits. Yeah. Yeah, whatever whatever sounds nice, whatever is beautiful. To Something my grandchildren, great grandchildren are going to hear and be like, yeah, that was my great grandfather who wrote them songs and telling them friends about it in school, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I feel like it's it's harder nowadays to make those type of timeless tracks, especially sure. with the, the way that like the rap industry is nowadays. It's kind of more about just like flexing, you know, yeah, flexing. And stuff like that. It's not really about no stories. It's kind of just. Yeah, you know, fifty yeah, fifty. Yeah. If it's fake or if it's cap or if it's real, what they talk about. Oh yeah, it's definitely uh, yeah, it's definitely that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I've been in this game for a while. I've been in the game what, fifteen years now. Fifteen years. Fifteen shit. years. Yeah, I've been active full time, making money and ain't have a regular job. Yeah. Damn, that's what's uh, self employed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in those fifteen uh, years, for everybody that's tuning in right now. Uh, give them just like a quick list of like some of the major names that you've had like the opportunity to work with and make tracks with. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, currently I'm in Los Angeles now. I live in LA now, LA area. But when I graduated from Full Sail, I moved to Atlanta. I started working with Outkast over at Stankonia Studios Ooh. with Big Boy. You know, so um, shout out the big one. Uh, you know, one the one of the first people to ever like give me a shout in this business. You know, give me a chance. You know. Um, I've been playing Mystic, one of my favorite songs. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it was was when I when I first when I moved to Atlanta, I had a uh, eighty five Cadillac Eldorado, the two door coupe with the spoke rims, the black rag top. You know, what I'm saying the limo <laughs> tents. It was my grandfather's car. So when he, Perfect. yeah, exactly, it had like sixty thousand miles. I drove that. So when I went to college, I drove that from Connecticut to uh, Orlando. You know, I'm a my grandfather, rest in peace, he passed away, and I inherited his car. And so when I moved to Atlanta, I had the Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? I had the Cadillac. Yeah. I was like, damn, Jay. And they're like, yo, white boy, and he got a Cadillac? <laughs> let, let him in. You know, he, he, he can stay. Let, let's get to know him, you know? So that's kind of, you know, how I, how I got my foot in the door. I literally just walked up to the stank on their door and rung the buzzer. It's a hi, I just graduated from Full Sail. I have my resume. And I'm looking for an entry-level position. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I started working weekends, you know? I was working the front desk, going on runs. You know what I'm saying? Did what I had to do to keep my stay my ass in the studio, you know? Damn. Yeah, I got the shadow under like uh, one of iconic mix engineer John Fry. I watched him mix a lot of hit records like Young Jeezy, Soldier Boy, like everything that's come out of Atlanta from 2006 to 2010. I, I pretty much seen all those records mixed, you know, it, while I was grinding and, and, do, and doing my producing and, and stuff, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's tight. That's tight. This man has been a part of the history, a good chunk of it too. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, got a lot of the culture. You know, you know, uh, the whole Dungeon fam. They're all you know, cool people. You know, yeah, always fuck with me. You know, yeah, that's sick. That's sick. You know? and, uh, not too long ago, uh, for anybody that's listening or watching, um, Jay Beats, he actually had just a release party for his new studio that he uh, opened up called Mars yeah. out in Chino. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool, dope little setup. <laughs> I've seen uh, uh, a couple of good amount of studios in my days before. You know, Flossy the Boss had his own back in the day. You know, I was a little youngster up in the up in the studio. You know, yeah, maybe spit a couple bars, but you know, he d <laughs> <laughs> unreleased tracks that not many people have heard yet. Exclusives, 
still waiting to release it. But um, yeah, I mean, congratulations, man, getting your own studio. How do you like? How do you feel about that? Getting your own little place, personal, everything like that. Well, it's cool. I, mean, I had a studio, like I said, when I was in Atlanta. I opened. A, um, I was still working at Stink on. I also opened up a studio in Atlanta too for a couple of years with a partner. You know, I was helping him out, and then. Um, then they sold the building, so uh, you know that kind of folded. So this is my second go around with it, you know. And, and this time, you know, it's me and a business partner, and yeah, it's it's, it's called Mars Studios, it's based at the J Beat Studio, you know. Um, but I mean, anyone can go there, you know. I mean, as long as you know you're you're a professional and you can afford the studio time, you know, we definitely would love your business, you know. And um, our our Instagram is at Mars dot recording dot studio. Yep. Sir, yes, sir. And the website up. is marsstudio.net. Yep. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Make sure y'all check it out. It's a pretty nice studio. If y'all want to get some work done, hit my boy up right here. Yeah, we got massage chairs. Um, oh, yeah. We got, Take advantage. Yeah, we got the rain, <laughs> We got the stars in the ceiling with shooting stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And we got all the sports package and, and the dirty channels if, if you need to watch that when you're on your break. <laughs> 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 the little peep room, not the peep room here. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah, yeah. And uh, when I was over there, uh, I was able to see that you got some platinum records up on the wall, and you know, you worked with names. I saw, I saw uh, Travis Scott up there, and that uh, you got some platinum records from the, uh, the album Astro World. Yes, yeah, Astro World. Yeah. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that, and how you got to be able to work with Travis Scott and be on that album. Yeah, yeah. I produced "Stop Trying to Be God." Ooh. That one's oh, a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That um, one's fire. Yeah, I just got on that. Just being in the LA loop. Just you know, I was at that at that at that time. I was working around a lot of the studios in LA. I was bouncing around to all the studios. You know, um, you know, Record Plant, Paramount, Glenwood, uh, Henson Studios. Was, I was just I was just in the loop. Westlake. I was just really in the loop at that time. So just just being in that room at the right place at the right time, I was able to get my beat played. You know, with one of the one of the writers and well, was a couple writers I don't really remember, but they they did what they did and, and he he selected the song, so that's pretty much how that happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, so how much time did you spend on like trying to master and produce that beat or that track? Well, it was just you know I, what I do is I just I, I make beats, I make records. You know, so I don't even say I make beats, I make records. You know, and it's all just random, like like it's just random. I make records and then I play them for people later or. It's just kind of like when I'm feeling, when I'm in a moment, when I'm just feeling good, I might have a couple of drinks. I might have some friends around. I might have some ladies around. I might be, I might be by myself. I might be coming home from travel. I might be coming back from the club. It just, whenever I feel it, I just do it. And sometimes I have those windows where I just do 10 records in one night. And then I might not do it for, for a few days or a week. You know what I'm saying? So when I catch those waves, I do it because it keeps me ahead of my time. So when I'm around the right folks, I have... Plenty of product to play. Yeah, just like an addiction that comes back, hits you hard one night. Mm -hmm. uh, like, absolutely, absolutely. It's like, yeah, it's it's just inspiration. When I feel it, I got to do it, you know, because there's times where I don't want to do it. So, yeah, when, so when I catch those windows of opportunity, I got to seize the moment. Yeah, and I I think that's good too because I I feel like a lot of rappers that are upcoming uh, and aspiring artists nowadays are trying to like emulate. Yeah, they're trying to like treat their music and stuff as like it's a job almost you know it's like this is my the only thing like yeah. I gotta do to uh you know get out of here but they they treat it the when they like start working on it producing it as a job when it really should be like your passion that's how you're gonna get the best music out of it is if like yeah. you're putting in the work for it not like you're just trying to get it done for a certain reason for sure but yeah but I mean once again props up I hope to see some work done in the studio I know Flossy the boss is a little excited. It's a little he always talks about in the area we live in, we ain't got nothing close to us. Everything you gotta drive, an hour plus to go. So no, no, yeah. now it's ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen yeah. minutes. Hell yeah, get some get some work done soon. Twenty man. minutes. It's, it's whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's close. So yeah, we can definitely gonna be making it happen, you know? Yeah. So because there's a lot of people out here. It's just it's just now they just gotta know that we're here. So it's serious. So, so that's the next step that me and my partners are working on. Yep. Yep, just getting them, getting them views up, getting them, you know, people on the internet realizing what Mars Studio is about and all that. Absolutely. So I hope big things for that. But I want to know when somebody like an artist as big as, say, Travis Scott uh, walks up into the building and you know you're like, 
he's there to work with you. Yeah. Do you ever get nervous in those situations or is it like more comforting? I ain't going to say nervous. I ain't going to say comforting. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I, I got to get the job done. It's like, I got to I gotta pull through. You know what I mean? I got to pull the rabbit out the hat. You know what I mean? I got to do what I do. Does you know? it ever feel like more, like, it puts more stress on you? Or is it just like the same old thing? Like, we're going to get this beat done. Yeah, I, just, I treat everything the same. Really, it's just some, some, it might be a more sense of urgency. You know, because I, you know... I ain't gonna say nervous, but that definitely like a sense of urgency. Like I gotta get it done. Don't worry about it. Just get it done. You know, and, I, and that's pretty much what I do. You know, yeah, more like gotta take advantage of the opportunity type of thing. Yeah, see, I'm mean, always about seizing the window, season the season the moment. You gotta see, you, you gotta walk through that door. You gotta, you know, you gotta cat, you gotta, you gotta close. It's like if you're a salesman, you gotta close. You gotta be a closer. You know, you know what I mean. And the way you close is by assuming the sale and by walking that path and. and just doing what you do, just being confident and comfortable, making the artist feel comfortable. ABC. Yeah, ABCs always be closing, you know. Um, one, two, threes. Uh, yeah. yeah, always be closing. Count your one, two, threes. But uh, now I remember when I had a sales job a long time ago, and the guy said, uh, he said, uh, he goes, other, uh, he goes, uh, other, he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, no, he said, he said, PMA equals OPM. And not the one he smoked. Ah, that's what he used to do. But anyway, so that's the rest in peace. He, he actually, but anyway, what that stands for, that stands for positive PMA equals OPM. Positive mental attitude equals other people's money. That, that's what he always told me when I was a salesman, you know, uh, before I was like producing music and stuff. You know, so. Yeah. so you got to be positive. You know, the, the point of me saying that is you got to be positive. You got to just... Be positive, you know, it's just whatever doubts or lacks or whatever, anything that might pull you in, any anchors you may have, you got to free them. And that's how you sell. Uh, that's what's you're, up. You're always, either, you're always either selling and closing or you're getting sold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's only, yeah, there's another thing my, my, one of my mentors told me. There's only two types of people in this world. Order takers or order makers. <laughs> Which one are you? <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Either bro. taking the order or you make it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. I, to I totally understand that because everything, I feel like in most industries, mm -hmm. everything kind of relies about you making connections around what you're trying to work around. And obviously with no connections, you're not going to go far with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely who you know. It just, it's just sometimes the things you gotta do to get the people to know. You know, especially like me, I came in this industry with with like no one doing it. You know, a lot of people who do this music are either like born into it, like you know, like they're born into this business, or or they bought into it. You know, me, I had to put in the labor just to mark push my way in. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. And so at what point do you think, like, you personally, when was your your break when you're like, oh, shit, I'm starting to do something. This is going to work. How far into this game were you? I had a few moments of that. I mean, I, had, I mean, like like I said, I started working at Stankonia in 2006. I remember I was there for a couple of years. I kind of, I remember in 2008, I kind of wanted to quit. It was, just, it was just frustrating. You know what I mean? And... You know, and, I, and like that's when I was doing sales too, because I was working studio at night and I was doing door to door sales during the day, and I was just like, it was just really frustrating. And then, and then, um, and then finally, a uh, big boy he selected the first beat for me. I got, I got paid like over ten thousand dollars for my first beat. I was like, oh shit, I can really do this, <laughs> and I didn't quit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. So, you know, shout out to Big for that, for, you know, for keeping keeping my inspiration high, you know. Yeah, and when he got that beat from me. You know? So you were sending him music often? When I was working in the studio, I would play CDs. I would, I would give him beat CDs. And then finally I got him to listen one night because I was like, man, I knew to myself, I was like, he ain't listening to my music. I could just tell. I was giving this man beat CDs for like two years, a year and a half. I was like, and then I got mad because this one guy walks in the building. I've never seen him day in my life. I'm in the studio almost every day. Some guy just walks in and plays him his beats. I was like, nah, that ain't happening. So I got up the same night while the guy was there. I went up to his best friend because his best friend at times the one who bought that guy to play his beats. I was like, yo, I got something for you. 
play my CD right now, and I'll give you, you know, so I'll, 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 I'll hook you up. He's like, all right, bet. So he played my CD, and that's how that's how I got my first deal. Just just like that? Just like that, bro. I, 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 I just manned up. I was like, fuck this, bro. Like, this man is in my house playing. I mean, I've been giving this man CDs for years, and this motherfucker going to walk in and play his shit? Fuck that. So, Damn. yeah. No, I have a good. I have a good lawyer. I, I, I have lawyers. Yeah, they on it. You ain't missing that yeah. <laughs> at all. And out of my whole career, because I've been so good with file management and all that, I probably lost only two songs my whole career. And the two songs I lost were my own beats. So I ain't lose files. I ain't lose. I ain't lose no Rihanna vocals or whatever. You know what I mean? I always. Yeah, always back my shit up. Yeah, keep it in check. It sucks for a bunch of these artists. They just yeah. be. I was think- robbed before too, though. Oh really? Yeah, I was in. A, I was. Uh, there was right before uh, Travis Scott and Nicki Minaj came out. Um, I, I had a brand new car and I left my book bag in the trunk of my car and I went inside the uh, the Deja Vu Club in downtown LA in the strip club <laughs> and and then, and then I come outside and my windows are smashed. And my book bag is gone. I had hard drives in there. I, I, had a, I lost everything. But I had my master drive at home. Uh, it was my whole career. So I loaded. I just had to buy a new laptop. I had to get all the pieces and everything and boot it right back up. And then like a month later, that's when uh, Nikki and Travis Scott came out. This, this happened a month right before those two records were released. So it was kind of a weird time. So I was like, I don't even care about it anymore. So. <laughs> Yeah, Damn, that's I was crazy. sick at the moment though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, they 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 stripped me dry. I ain't gonna lie. Oh my gosh! They're supposed to you. suck you dry, not strip you dry. You know, <laughs> shit. But fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so obviously putting putting a lot of time and years and effort into uh, all your work they've done in the music industry. Got some more Hennessy, please. Oh, yeah. Pass Thank them you. in some Hennessy, please. Go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an important reason. It's important reasons. Oh, thanks, bro. Oh, you got the, the big boy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So you were in oh, the middle of saying something and then I cut oh, you yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. What I wanted to ask you is for uh, the up and coming artists, uh, you know, say they're not big in the game they're just starting out they're like maybe like a couple months into their journey and they're you know they really want to like take it seriously and put like all of their all they got into this yeah. what would be like some advice you give them or what's a personality trait that you think all artists should have in order to be you know successful in progressing I mean definitely gotta be open minded you gotta be open to constructive criticism you know you may not agree with what everybody says at least hear them out and then make and then make and then make your judgment after. But you gotta listen to people, especially people who've been doing it. You know what I mean? And like I said, you don't gotta apply, but at least show the respect to listen. Um, open minded and then get a get with a crew. You know what I'm saying? Get with a crew and stay loyal. You know what I mean? Whether it's with your homies or if you're working for somebody. You know, if you say if you even if you gotta get a job holding someone's bag or you know what I'm saying, or getting coffee, or whatever. Work for someone, help them, and in return, help yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I've come to realize that a lot of a lot of people who um, we've interviewed that are like uh, producers or artists or like cameramen and stuff like that, uh, and all the people we just met in general uh, through the business and stuff. I, I've realized a lot of them, like like you're saying, they started off holding that camera bag for the homie. They started off just, you know, coming to the studio and, like, taking the videos in the back and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you got to start somewhere, yeah. But, you know, that's where, like, their obsession begins, you know? It's like taking a... Because, like, when you go out, if you like, if, if you go to school, you study in a certain subject, it's like, man, it's boring. It's, I have to be here. But when it's like you working towards something and you're actually doing it, you know, get a little bit more enjoyment out of that. And not only enjoyment, you're not, you're not looking at the clock. Because oh, yeah. I remember when I had a, a regular job back in the day, I would always look at the clock and I couldn't wait until I'm like, okay, 15 more minutes to my break. Okay. Sure. Okay. Two more hours till I clock out. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're, when you're doing something that you have a passion for, 
you don't you don't really look at the clock. I mean, you look at the clock just because you want to know what time it is, but you're not like counting. Oh, when am I gonna take a break? You'll take a break when you take a break. When you know what I'm saying? You may you don't you take different breaks at different times. You know what I mean? It just next thing you know, it ten hours just went by. You know what I'm saying? Then it's, it's time to go home. You know what I mean? Good day's work. You know so yeah. That that's that that's what I enjoy about one thing I really do enjoy about doing what I do is I'm not really staring at the clock unless I'm billing someone for studio time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. You're out. All right. You got 15 minutes. Or are you going to book three more hours? All right, bet. You know, you know, you know, you know, that's, you know. so that's really the only time I'm really staring at a clock. Like, cause you know, now I, you know, I own the studio. So, you know, you gotta be about the time cause time is money. But other than that, I just look, I look at it as projects. I don't really look at it as a at our shift or I look at it as a project. Yeah. You know, I'm going to mix this song today. I'm going to produce this record. I'm going to do three hooks today. You know, I'm going to work with this artist today, you know? So that's how I look at it. Yeah, that's tight. That's tight. The best work is the ones that doesn't feel like you're working. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, so you say that you could be you'd be in the studio f- for a long time, like 10 hours plus. Sometimes. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like last, I think it was like last week, like right before y'all came to my party. I did like a whole album in three days. I was in the studio. So like I said, when I catch these windows, I do it. I was in the studio from like, I think, eight, 7 p.m. that Friday night. And I didn't leave to like 5 p.m. the next day. So I was there for like 22 hours. Damn. And then I went home and crashed. And then I came back and did it again for like 20 hours and crashed. But during the course of those two 20-hour shifts and crashing, I did a whole album. Damn, that's crazy. You know what I mean? I did like 15 songs, 15 hooks, 15 beats, 15 records, ready to go. Hell yeah, that, that's what's up, bro. You know, and I'm not doing that every day. Otherwise, I'll crash and burn. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, but I have those moments where I just do it. And I get it out, have some drinks, whatever, you know, just, just to get in that zone and just get into my vibe and, and get it out, my system. Yeah, work hard, play hard, man. Yeah, sir. And so, what what time of like day do you think you work the best? Is it nights, mornings, afternoons? I mean, it depends what I'm doing. Um, if I'm like, if I'm doing technical stuff, if I'm mixing a record, because I, I treat that more like a job, even though it's not a job. But if I'm like, okay, I'm mixing today. Today I'm going in just to mix. I like to do that during the day, completely completely sober, maybe a little weed. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, um, you know. I treat that more professional. You know what I mean. Um, I, I do everything professional. I just treat that more. I don't know, daytime wise. Like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but yeah. When I do mixing during the day, little weed, straight edge. You know, and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when I when I'm creative, I like creating um, at night. I like getting. Uh, sometimes I like getting fucked up, but I like having people around me. I don't like being alone when I create. I get lonely. And I stare at my phone <laughs> and I start trying to call girls or, or friends. You know, it's not it's not inspirational. So I like having people around me when I'm creating because I feed off their energy without them even knowing. You know, it's like I just listen to their conversation. I have people in the room just so I can just listen to their conversation, <laughs> and then I'll and I'll take pieces of their conversation. That's how I write the hook. You know. Or just having people around just to say, damn, Jay, that's dope. That's dope, I guess. I don't know. Muses, I guess you can say, but <laughs> motivation, those, you know, inspiration, just motivation. Muses, women, uh, co co writers, co producers, you know, artists, you know, so it's a party, you know, it's an organized party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> it's good to have, you know, company around, you know, others, you know, others' ideas, others' opinions and stuff like that while you're working. Yeah, but if I if I ain't feeling right though, or if I feel like weird energy, I'll I'll, I'll definitely ask p- people to leave. I'll say, oh hey, I got I, I got another session coming in. I need y'all to get. <laughs> I'll, I'll make up something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's respectable though, especially now that it's like, especially <laughs> if it's your own studio, it's your own time and stuff like yeah. that. It's respectable. I mean, there's times where I where I gotta get mean too, like because once I had a lady friend up there. This was recently, and um, one of, <laughs> and, one of my, and one of my homies. Was in there. He was lit, lit. He was lit, lit. And um, I don't know. I said something about something about eating ass. I don't know. I said something about eating ass. 
And my homie, he looks at my my lady friend. He goes, uh, excuse me, Miss Lady. So uh, you like to get your ass ate by a man? <laughs> and I looked at him. I say, you, you go over here. You go over here. So I look, I point at him. I say, you go to the back of the room. You go over here. You stay away from her. You go over here. He's like, oh, oh my bad. I'm sorry. I was in there. <laughs> well, excuse me, Miss Lady. I was like, what? And I looked at her. I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like kind of like wasted. I was a little tipsy. And I was like. He just say that to her? He doesn't even know her name. He's he only been in the room for one minute. He just got there because I was having a conversation about so I don't know somehow eating ass got brought up. And he goes, "Excuse me, Miss Lady, so you like to get your ass ate out by a man?" No, hey, Miss Lady, nice to meet you. I was like, "Bro, you stay away from her." But I did get the poo tang at the end of the night, <laughs> so I still succeeded. <laughs> Even with the hate in the room, I still won, you know? So, yes, sir. It's, it's, it's just how you maneuver. That's why I say, you go over there, you stay away. But anyway, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes so, it's got to be done. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> when it's your shit, your session, I, you got to, and dealing with those, that many energies, you got to be able to delegate it because if not, it becomes craziness. And then before you know it, you have an unorganized party and you're not making any music, you know? So, you got to be able to. Be the captain as well, and, and guide the people while they're getting fucked up. <laughs> yeah, guide them in the right. And make direction. sure no one's leaving drinks on the mixing console. Man, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of <laughs> shit that goes with it, bro. You know, you know, being the captain of the ship isn't as easy as it looks. Hell of maintenance. <laughs> yeah, but I do make it look easy. But sometimes <laughs> I do get a little stressed too, though. But but sometimes. You know, if, if I didn't have those energies around me, I wouldn't gotten out the music that I got out. So, the music goes perfectly, the captain goes perfectly with the full sail degree. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they don't teach you that part, though. <laughs> they don't teach you that part. No, sir, they teach sir. you the technicalities. And, and, uh, <laughs> this is what an EQ and a compressor does, and, and a reverb, and, and you know what I'm saying? They teach Basic you. Yeah, they teach you the technical shit, but all the vibe shit. That's called seasoning, and you only get that with time and experience. <laughs> and I'm well seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> so, well seasoned. <laughs> he know what that means. Floss know what that means. He a vet. He know what that is. I bet he does. I bet he does. I remember one time, like like before, but like before I, I I reached, you know, before I got bigger than what I was at the time. I remember I would do, I would engineer sessions. Like I used to bounce around studios in Atlanta, you know, hustling. You know, doing engineering sessions and like people who didn't know me, they would be like, "Is he seasoned?" And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Is he seasoned? Because like, because we have certain clients, especially when we work with a high profile clientele, you gotta have a, you gotta have a certain level of sauce, or you can't handle these type of clients. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel, yeah, I yeah, feel. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll fucking they'll chew your ass out and they'll never hire you again. <laughs> the next thing you're known as that engineer. And then they won't hire you again. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of shit that comes with this, bro. It's more than just press and record. Yo, rap. Nah, I'm, it's a lot, bro. Now, you will get told, and I've done it before, that you ain't shit yeah. when you're in the studio. I've, I've actually done that to people only because <laughs> you're on the clock and everyone in the room is on the clock. We've got to deliver. Yeah. And if someone in the room is not delivering, you got to put them on blast. Like, get Facts. the fuck out the room. Facts. And I've been there. I mean, I heard Lil Wayne smack one of his engineers because he accidentally deleted one of his breaths. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you want to be an engineer, you want to be a producer. Uh, okay, well, you better get your shit right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know it was super deep like that. It's oh, yeah. It's raw when you're in the session. And what's funny is when you go to a studio, a lot of times the engineers are these rock guys. They're not typically hip hop guys. So if you go to a studio, the engineers not even in the hip hop realm. They're whiter than me. Yes. <laughs> like I'm white, but people say I'm clear. You know I'm not, what I'm saying? I'm not saying that's the word, but I'm saying they're white. No, right. they're white. No, I'm clear. Yeah. They're white. You know what I'm saying? But I'm white too, but I'm so, just. So also but they're white. really white. <laughs> so so hip hop, and all of a sudden they do some crazy stuff on the fly, which you didn't ask them to do. And it just changes the whole vibe. Yeah. It pisses you off. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. That is something that gets very serious and very real in the studio. It's like dorky white guys trying to do hip hop music that probably never even dated a black girl before. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it gets real tricky in these rooms. So, so for me, in order, you know, if they don't know me, I would have that stigma. 
So, so this was when I was coming up, you know, before, you know, Jay Beats was, you know, it was when I was Josh, you know what I'm saying? Josh, yeah, yeah, Josh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Josh, the engineer, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? So, so That's yeah, white <laughs> that white guy that dated black girls though. So, so I had, I had more sauce than the other guys, you know? So I, I was able to absorb more sauce and be able to learn by a lot of the greats who, who, who didn't mind me being in the room and, you know, and I was able to learn a lot, you know? Yeah. Uh, did you find yourself in that situation a lot where like the artist is telling you like, hey, no, nah, like this, you fuck this up, like change this shit, this, that, the other? Like where- Of course, to, yeah. Like to the point where it was like, where it was kind of like ever discriminating to your like work? Well, it's like sometimes, because like me, I know like I always do deep down in my soul, I'm a, I'm a record producer, you know what I'm saying? So when I'm engineering, it's like a lot of times when you're engineering, you're hired, you're a work for hire, you're working for the client and then- and your clients always have all these demands. Well, do this or do that, do this and do that, 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 that. And always just like toasting. And I don't like when someone pokes me. You know what I'm saying? So like it's gotten to the point where the client will start poking me while I'm engineering. I'm like, oh, look, bro, look, you can tell me what to do. Just, just don't poke me. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I have PTSD. I've gotten into real fist fights from people poking me. I don't do the poke thing. Like, you know, so I have to be nice to what at least enough like, Please don't poke me. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? And then I, I've gotten to the point where like they all say different things and they all mean the same thing. So I just do it without them even telling me to do. And they're like, yeah, that's it. Oh, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Quarter note delays, uh, EQ, ro low roll off, uh, uh, high, high, you know, high, high end, limit their vocals, give them some nice reverbs, quarter note delays, make it sound loud, a beat knocking, and they're happy. <laughs> well, the opposite happens though too when you're in the studio and you have a guy like yourself who's an engineer who you're hiring to be the engineer, but then all of a sudden he's trying to bring out the production skill to impress you, and then all of a sudden you get pissed off because this dude's trying to be a producer. Oh, you mean the engineer trying to be the producer when yes. it's when it's not his time? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, the, common. that's hard. That's hard, and uh, he's correctly right. So you know how I broke that cycle. Because he's right, though, because if you're the engineer trying to be the producer in the session, they won't call you back. Never. They'll fire you. They might, they'll fire you right there if it's that if it's that serious. So what I started doing, um, some of my clients, I would slide my beats in their beat folders where it would say, uh, uh, where it would say other producers' names. You know what I'm saying? Where it would say uh, uh, DJ uh, Snake or whoever. D uh, 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 um I can't even think of other producers. What's what are the producers are out now? I can't even think. I mean, Will, yeah, like Mike, Mike Will, Will, DJ Mustard, like these guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I will put my beats in their folders, <laughs> and that's how they got picked. <laughs> so they're like, "Who did this beat?" I was like, "Me." <laughs> well, I need the files. I was like, "Okay, I got you." So that's how I got that seat. <laughs> So you just you gotta be innovative when you coming through that world. When you coming through the engineer route and molding to a producer, it's hard to break out of that. It really is. So you just you gotta figure it out. Yeah, listen to JB. She's gotta slip your beats in there somehow. <laughs> Get them in there. But you gotta be careful too, because if they find out and they don't like it, you're fired. <laughs> they just happen to like it. And so, you know. Some of it's yours if they don't like it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> so, but what if you're but what if you're playing it one day? Like, oh I heard that. That's yours? <laughs> That's trash. <laughs> I heard that the other day. I deleted it. <laughs> so yeah, you definitely gotta be careful when I mean when you you know, but when you strike, you gotta know how you're striking and when to strike. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I did. And you know, I was like, okay, bet. So Yeah, <laughs> all this worked out. Yeah. That's tight. So it's crazy to think it's December now, end of the year coming up, 2022 coming up, and it's crazy to think. Yeah. I want to know, how did 2021 treat you? Better years than before? A little bit more of a struggle? 2021 started out really rough. Um, I lost my dad this year. You know, um, rest in peace to my pops. So rest in peace. You know, Dan Adams, you know, great, great man, you know, um, you know, he, he was my first investor. He helped me with college, you know, helped me pay my rent and, you know, paid a, a piece of my tuition. So he really believed in me. He really, you know what I mean? I like that you call him your first investor. Yeah, he, he was. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> my dad, but he is, though. <laughs> he was. He was my first investor. I, I, had a couple of, I had a couple of investors in my career. Yeah, that was my first. 
Da, da, ja. <lacht> so anyway, so, you know, yeah, yeah, he passed away this year, you know, you know, that was rough, but, I, you know what I'm saying, I'm still going through it, but he's happy, though, because through the midst of that, like, right after he passed away, he, we was in Florida where he passed, he, you know, he was in um, 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 Tampa, so, like, right after he passed, I just got in the car, I just left everyone, I just drove my, by myself, I had a rental car, I drove down to Miami, Got me a hotel right on the water. You know, I was on the news too, by the way. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you that clip in a sec after. I, so so anyway, just went straight to Miami. Got me a room on the right on the water. You know, it was like 40th floor up. I was just you know just get my mind right. You know, what I mean, I had some, I had a couple girls come see me, take care of me. You know, just you know all that good stuff. I was by myself, little single man's solo vacation after his man's pass. You know, after his pops pass. So. So anyway, I got the phone call while I was there from my from my to my business partner. Now he was like, "Yo, I'm sorry about your loss, you know, but when you get back to LA, I need you to come in with your dick in your hand and, and your head up, bro. We, uh, let's do it. We're gonna do the studio. We're gonna open the studio, you know." So I got that phone call that I we're gonna do the studio like right right after my dad passed. So it was kind of like, you know, it was like the good. That was the good through the bad. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's you know that was like my motivation to. Uh, Get my ass back to LA and get my ass back to work. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's serious. It's serious. So while while I was in Miami, I was on the news though. At the hotel <laughs> I was staying at. Yeah, y'all gotta hear this clip. We're floss yeah. Yo, floss. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it. We can put it in the video too. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on my Instagram. By the way, my Instagram is at J B S J B E A T Z Z. Yes, sir. Two Z's. Miami police investigating a shooting right on North Bayshore Drive. Police responded to this area around 3.30 a.m. after hearing shots were fired outside the Marriott. I'm just coming back to my room to go to sleep and I see a bunch of police in a helicopter. I just hope no one got killed. I normally don't see this type of stuff in hotels now, especially a, a Marriott. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so basically, right, I was in the studio. You know, I know people, I did a lot of work in Miami. That's where I did a Nicki Minaj record. Uh, you know, I did that at the Hit Factory, Hit, uh, Criteria Studios. So anyway, I was visiting Miami. I went to one of my studio. One of my friends got a studio. So I was drunk, and on my way home, it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm driving drunk. Don't do this, people. But <laughs> I see a bunch of police in a helicopter, like I said in the news. And then the news reporters come to my car. They all bombard me. <laughs> I was drunk as shit in my car on the fucking news. <laughs> About a fucking, they just shot up at my hotel, and I'm at the Marriott. <laughs> my dad just passed. I'm trying to mourn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and I couldn't even park. I had to park two hotels down and walk because all the valet parking was, was yeah, it was fucked up. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> kind of funny, though. When you look back at it, it was pretty funny, though. But at the moment, it freaked me out. I was like, no, please don't talk to me. And then they come right up to my door with the microphones. <laughs> I'm drunk as shit. I was, oh, God. That's like, that's like, so if you watch, when you watch a news clip, you see, I don't make no eye contact with the camera. I was like, I'm like this. Well, I just saw a helicopter, police car in a helicopter. I just, I just hope no one got killed. You know, <laughs> I just want to go back to my room <laughs> peacefully. <laughs> they know? didn't even like ask you if you wanted to be in the news. They just started talking. Oh no, to they you. came over the microphone. It was like, it's like, no, they asked me, but I was, I was like, you want to be on the news? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, you're gonna be famous. I was like, oh, whatever. So I was like, fuck, I do interviews all the time, drunk. I, I can knock this out, <laughs> but I'm not making any eye contact because I'm drunk as shit. <laughs> So I just stayed like this while they talked to me. And there's a lot more that I said, but they, they didn't put it all in the news. Like they, they made one thing. They was like, well, are you scared? They asked me one thing that wasn't on the news. They said, are you scared about gunshots? I was like, nah, you know, I grew up in the hood. I was like, I, I heard gunshots plenty of times, but they're not, they're not gonna put that in the news. <laughs> they just put in the juicy stuff. I just hope no one got killed, you know? <laughs> I never hear, I never see stuff like this, especially at a Marriott, you know? So anyway, it was kind of funny. Yeah, special TV appearance. You yeah, know? yeah. Shout out to Miami <laughs> News. I think it was News Channel. I don't know what News Channel was. Yeah. But yeah. So going into 2022, what can we expect from JB to the Mars uh, studio? What's going down? Well, yeah, I do got my label, uh, Sick Made Entertainment. Um, I do have an artist named Dwayne Jr. His Instagram is at it's Dwayne Jr. I'm waiting for some deals to fall through for him. We're going to push his single coming 2022. Um, I'm working on more records, more major placements. I can't really um, announce who those major artists are, but, but I'm definitely got some more things in the pipeline with that. Um, branding my recording studio, and yeah, and branding my label. And yeah, that's, 
that's what we're doing and get more placements and you know it's it's it's, it's the re it's the re it's the comeback of the comeback you know what i mean like 2018 was a big year for me 2019 was good and the coronavirus hit and then like i said my the passing my father and then now 2021 got the studio and then i like my line is going back up so now it's time to have another run like i did in 2018 but bigger this time yeah time yeah. to start hitting some more 20 yeah. hour shifts yeah yeah i'm still gonna do that I'm still, I'm still gonna do that it's just about working smart and being in the right places because i can sit there in my studio every day but it's about me being in the right places being in the right places is how i got these records how did i get on nikki because i was in miami how did i get on travis because i was at his such you know it's just it's just it's just being versatile and and keeping those relationships open Serious, serious, serious. Yep. 2022, expected some big old top of the line chart records from Jay Beats. Yes, yes. Obviously, he's done it before. Doesn't fail, never disappoints. And uh, I just like to appreciate you because you had me over. You didn't even know who I was when I first came over to the studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, Flossy, if you use Flossy people, so I was all right. Look, all right, you look cool. You got to be cool, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> appreciate it, though. Studio is dope, you know. Appreciate anybody that, you know, lets me come into their space where they work oh, yeah, and work craft and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously a blessing to have you now in our in our little workspace that we got going on here. But, yeah, man. I, I love it. I appreciate you coming through, man. Put, put some people on some game mm-hmm. right now for the people that are listening. Put me on some game, too, you know. Open everybody's eyes. Got to be more optimistic and stuff like that. But, yeah, I appreciate you coming through, man. I'm, I'm I'm sure we could keep talking forever, but you know. Oh no, that's cool. We don't want. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot to say, but you know, you got a show to run. So, yeah. no, where can people find you? Oh yeah, follow my Instagram at J Beats. That's J B E A T Z Z. J Beats with two Z's, and then Mars Recording Studio. That is Mars M A R S dot Recording dot Studio. Um, Mars Studio dot net. We out you. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. And like always, guys, that has been another episode of the podcast with Prodigy featuring my boy Jay Beats. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, check out all of his Instagrams and everything to hit him up for bookings and stuff like that at the studio. Also, don't forget to check out the other content we got on our Roku channel and YouTube channel at What's Good Entertainment. Peace. Yep. Podcast.